Good evening. <laughs> well, let's uh, get down to business, I guess. I gotta make up some hinges. I should have made some up first, but uh, I didn't. Uh huh. I got uh, two of those, a couple of these right push grommets. I didn't know where they were. We'll put them in here. One there. One there. So we got grommets in there, so that, that's good. So I need six hinges. It's a four, five, six. Looks like I'm going to have to get me some more. Going to have to have some more. I only got enough to build about five more airplanes. Now, I've, I've taken a piece of piano wire and ground a fairing, a flaring tool in it. Eighth inch. This is the hardest part, setting these stupid little things in there, but you got to do it. And please don't ask me where I got them because I had to search on Amazon for these. I'm going to set these up, and then I'm going to go over to my, I'll turn the camera around and show you setting them on my television. I think I got a couple more packages of these somewhere. Matter of fact, I know I do. I can give you, well, I don't see them hanging here. There we go. See, these are 132nd ID. Hmm. SH212 from SIG. I got a few more. SH212 is what I use for uh, bushings. Each one of these brass eyelets is sourced from a different spot. And like I say, they're a pain in the butt to find it. You know, when you got to have something, you just got to have it. And I have two different rods two different tools that I made to set these. And I'll show you the other. Well, I got three tools, but one is a one is a commercial grade for the eighth inch. For the 332nd, I made another one. And for the 16th, I made the one I showed you there. Pretty bad when you got to make your own tools. Come on out of there. And tough to get out. There we go. Okay. Six. Okay, this uh this Tool is made from 532nd ARC plane, Michael. 
this tool here is made from 532nd uh, piano wire, and this one's made from 8th inch, and then the one from for the 8th inch is a regular setting tool that you can buy. See, I got pencils. All right, we're gonna have to set these so I just got a little ball peen hammer and we'll turn this around here. Go over to my vice. Audio may not be good over there, but I only got to set six of these, so. Turn it upside down. Place is so dark, it's ridiculous. And if you're going to build model airplanes, I would suggest that you uh, are able to see, which I can't see very good anyway. But. Don't rely on glue to hold these bearings in. Go ahead and mash them over like this. Okay, we got hinges now. What I'm running for a light overhead is something that I made. Uh, we can see it there. It's two light stands <laughs> with truck LEDs inside it with a transformer sitting on the shelf. Okay, put the hammer back where it belongs so I don't lose it. And my tool back in the box so I don't lose it. Because it was a pain in the butt to make. 
Okay, we're going to get out a Jim Lee 16th inch finger drill. I'm going to mark these exactly where they go. I was seriously considering not doing a uh, show tonight, but can't let my audience down. Okay, so we got them marked. Pull this off. I'll turn this up. Right in the center. This is a pilot hole. They, they need to be eighth inch. You always watch and always click the button. Thank you. Now you want these hinges right in the center. I, I just eyeball it. I mean, you know, you're going to get it close within a, a couple of thousands. Like I, I always say, you're not building a watch. Just try to make it perpendicular to the trailing edge now, I suppose you could drill it with a with a uh, electric drill, but you won't have as much control over the electric drill as you do by hand. Now, remember, when I built this, I put, I put blocks inside there, little blocks of half-inch balsa shaped to a wedge so that that hinge has something to grab all the way down the length of the shaft. My trailing edge is only eighth inch, so you certainly don't want an eighth inch stick only glued to an eighth inch piece of wood. So we got that done. Let's see if we get an eighth inch drill now. Says eighth inch, okay. Then I got to broach them.
Okay, where are we at here? This weekend, I went through. I have to re put a piece of shear web in there. This weekend is going to be FCM, so there's not going to be any building videos this weekend. I went, I went through that. I'll show you right here. And you see that block that's inside there? That's what holds the hinge in. I'll just glue this piece back in. I knocked it out. <clears throat> I'm waiting. Amazon was supposed to deliver my Teflon tubes and another bottle of Bob Smith CA. But I'm a second class citizen. They never they never get to me when they're supposed to. So I'll get it tomorrow and <clears throat> I'll go over this thing in detail, glue it once again make sure i got all the joints i just don't want to put a lot of glue into this thing so i'd rather wait okay now i gotta broach them what is broaching broaching is turning a round hole square Yes, the trailing edge is eighth inch standing on edge. Yep, I'm going to have to get another hinge and cut it. A broaching tool in machine shop is a is just a piece of hardened steel that that's square that they force down through the hole. Well, I don't have a hardened piece of steel, so I just use a another hinge, and I'm going to take my cutters here. We'll cut an angle on it. Let's see, we'll cut it this way. shape like that and that will turn around whole square so let's uh, set back a little bit Try to make sure that the hinge stays square. You know, everything stays square this way and square that way. Yes, I showed you guys. The blocks are inside the wing. I'll show show you once more. I knocked part of the uh, shear web off, and I, I'll show you the block inside once again. The block he's talking about, each one of these locations hinge locations has a little block in it like that it's the block is glued to the top here and to the eighth inch piece inside you 
You don't need a solid le uh, trailing edge. It's just not necessary. Now what happened to my hinge that I was using? Ah, there it is. I watched some RC guy today with some kind of gapless hinge made of tubes. Terrible. Just a terrible idea. The friction on that must be ridiculous. Okay, so now let's um, do one side at a time to make sure I get them on correctly. So I'm going to put the hinge in. Now these hinges will not be installed permanently until after it's painted. I mean, I suppose you could glue them in now, but you might as well go ahead and finish everything while it's apart. Especially with the setup we got now where the flaps come off. Uh, Okay, now I get the wire. See if I can fish the wire down through there. Okay, wire, wire, wire. Where's the wire? That's carbon. There we go. Nope, that's too big a wire. I don't think this is the wire. I think this is too big. Yeah, I do. Hmm. Let's take this off and we'll do each hinge one at a time. And then I'll get it to fit right. Why does this wire seem like it don't want to fit? I think it may be too big. This wire is too big. I thought it was.
There we go. This is uh, one of the hardest parts of the hinging system is to find this stupid wire because it's an oddball size. There we go. We got her now. I need another piece of wire here. Seems like nobody ever carries exactly what you need. You got to go on a scavenger hunt to find stuff. There we go. That's better. Okay, got that. Let's cut that off. I don't need six miles hanging up there. I still haven't figured out how I'm going to terminate these. But I'll think of something. There's the glue that's got the glue in it. Let's put a new tip on that bottle. And that might help. Okay. Remember the the I got a hint I got hinges in here. The reason behind this hinging system is for the ultimate free controls. But it's not just the ultimate and free controls. And gapless, no tape, hinge line. I hate that tape stuff. I might have to grind that a little bit. Yeah, this one needs to be... I need to file this over this way. Just a, just a smidge. Remember, whatever it takes, ever how much time it takes to get this absolutely 100% free, that's what it takes. File, sand, cut, grind, whatever you got to do, because without free controls, you, gotta, you don't have an airplane that's worth a darn. I'm going to have to find my, my rat tail file. Where are you? I got these diamond files.
the epoxy will take up any of the slack in that hole. You gotta have some room for epoxy anyway. You don't want to CA these because what happens with CA, it'll it'll find the barrel of a hinge and lock the flap up bigger than it's not. Come on, get on there. this to flop. It's uh, not quite right. I think it's this right here. Need to hold that in there. Ah, I don't want to put a dent in the wood. Take that wire out and finish that tip off so it's really nice. We'll get a look at the other side here and see what it's going to take. Okay. Now you could you could put carbon fiber spacers in here and not use this singular piece of piano wire and it might be a little lighter. However, you would be able to remove the flaps then. So I'm gonna use the one or two grams extra in a single piece of wire so that I can experiment with flap shape. Oops, too far. Come on. There it is. Maybe let's cut that cut that wire off. Maybe about an inch hanging out. Now the theory behind all this is that everything's in line. All the hinges are in line. The horn is in line. And when I get it working right, these flaps will just fall <laughs> under their own weight. At least that's the theory.
37 minutes in and I still ain't got this done. Man, I ain't as fast as I thought I was. some more. Finish off that tip. I've got to ogle that thing out. Yeah. Shoot. Half round file, maybe. Yeah, we'll do it with the file. Because of the uh, the shape of these flaps and how they work, you have to make sure that it's relieved at the tip. Let me turn this. Because they rotate in a knuckle. be out there sanding you only got like two days left we'll finish that off with uh yeah we won't worry about that tonight i'll get it with the exacto knife You guys got no idea how good it is to see Danny for me because we flew together 30 years ago and uh, he kind of disappeared off the scene and then one day he's getting a hold of me because of this channel and decides that he wants to uh, fly again that was great there well they're they're hens and they would work as is but i'm going to get them to so they're looser for some reason there's i think it's right here yeah i think i need to file it flap right there uh, binding not down in the clip far enough so we'll 
So we'll make that happen right now. What's the story? If you do nothing else on your airplane, make sure the controls are free. Because even if you got a poorly aligned airplane, you can trim it out. But if you got an airplane that the controls are stiff, you can't do nothing with it. Might as well throw it out. Nothing should be touching. What happened? The wire fell out. <laughs> Shoot. Yeah. I have to watch that. Okay, we got one, two, three hinges. I'm thinking that I'm going to put a little screw in the end of the flap or something. Bend that wire into a loop to hold that wire in. And uh, put a little socket head 632 wood screw in there or something. could probably, you know, I'll bend this over and embed that like I did on the elevators. Of course, I'm not sure that that's how the elevators are going to be either. They might get a screw in there. Just, you know, you got to think things through. So I, I don't know what I'm going to do there yet. I'll figure it out as I go engineering on the fly I don't have a CAD program my CAD programs in my head by the time them guys dork around with all that CAD drawing and all that stuff I got the stuff built there it is see it dropped in there so that yeah that's what it was <clears throat> all right there's a there's the hinging of the of the flaps we did it in 45 minutes so the rest of the the rest of the project is sanding <laughs> a lot of sanding of course we're going to do the the bell crank too. I think I've changed it up. I'm not going to use basswood. I'm going to use light ply up here in this in this area here for the uh, compression spar. Now I got one light ply spar <clears throat> already in it right here, but I don't like it. It's not long enough. I'm going to run that light ply spar from that rib to that rib and probably back to here, and I'm going to put holes in it to lighten it up even more. Now that you think, well, the bell crank is going to be suspended between those two uh, compression spars. That's not what holds the bell crank in. Yeah, we're going to have that suspended on that. And yeah, that, that would probably hold the bell crank in. But what holds the bell crank in is when you put the fuselage on the airplane, you have a piece of it only has to be a half inch wide seven ply aircraft plywood that runs between the fuselage sides, top and bottom. And then it's all super filled inside, which I've sh showed before. You want to super fill the inside of your fuselage and the outside so that the fuselage locks up and becomes part of the wing. So that when the engine's running, the vibration is transmitted throughout the whole airframe. You don't want it just pounding in one spot. You want it over the whole airframe. 
And if you do that, make the fuselage, the bell cranks part of the fuselage, part of the wing, the covering is, you know, it's all monocoque. What that does, it locks everything together. And you'll build a stronger airplane for less weight. Like an I-beam wing. If you look at an I-beam wing, you think, well, God, that thing will never stay together. There's just little sticks and stuff in there. Well, they hold together rather well because one part depends on the other. And the same with this Warren truss or geodesic style rib. If you angle the ribs point to point, it becomes more torsionally rigid. If they were just straight, that's how we used to do it. And they work, but these offset Warren truss ribs are stronger. If you look at a bridge, the bridge is always, everything's an angle. And the closer you can make the points, the stronger it's going to be to a point. Unlike some things I've seen. So are there any questions on the hinge mount and how that works? Can't get any better than that. Everything's in straight line. There'll be nothing binding. There's zero hinge gap because the hinge gap is set back in the in the uh, trailing edge. So there's no need for stupid tape. You guys that run that tape, no, thank you. Now, if you look at the uh, stabilizer, you see how it rotates inside the, the cut. There's no hinge gap, and they're 100% free. And that's the reason why I've went to... Uh, I went to a three thirty second wire instead of the ball links. Just less friction area. Yeah, it works real good. It works real good. I'm real happy with that setup. And I'm sure that I've told the story. Danny knows the, the story. And... Uh, 1960s Youth Air State Champion Ron O'Toole used to fly with Billy. Used to be my coach. Used to be my buddy. Now I don't know what, what his problem is. Anyway, we were out at the field and he was telling me about some kind of goofball setup like this. 30 years ago. He told Danny about it 30 years ago. And I just happened to be sitting on, on the couch 10 years ago and go, hey, I know what he was talking about. We didn't have a, I didn't have a picture of this setup. So, hey, I know what he was talking about. And so I ran upstairs and I made up a, a mock-up, you know, a prototype. And I go, I'll be damned. That's exactly right. Now, I, I was doing it different where I was insetting each hinge pin individually. That's how my airplanes are done. The one overhead is done and the Junar is done and the Tucker is done that way. I was set, you know, setting each pin individually. And then John came up with the, the buried carbon rod, which will make the flap stiffer. The buried carbon rod with one single piece of wire running all the way across and that I looked at looked at that and said, "That's sweet. I'm going to do that." So, so this is a collaboration hinge setup between uh, Ron O'Toole, myself, and John Jordan. And if we get, if you know, if we come up with another mod, we'll put that out. It's kind of like if you look back at my channel. You can find all kinds of things in there if you 
the uh, Saturday at John's programs are pretty in informative where we've done tissue tests and uh, carbon tests and did some molding stuff. Oh yeah, they don't. Work, you can't get them to work any better than that. Your airplane should, when it's sitting on the ground, should the flap should be down under their own weight. Elevators up, flap down. And that's part of the reason why I'm dumping the ball links. That and they, they. Uh, You know, they have a tendency to bind up in, in, in weather. Now, Tryon, he had a setup for metal ball links, aluminum. And I got some. But I can't find a screw that fits in the, fits in the, you know, that I can screw them, that I can attach them to the, I might do that. I might look. Take it up to the hardware store and see, dig through the metric crap. See if I can find a screw and put a metal ball link at the uh, at the bell crank. And that way I don't have to worry about them Dubro ball links binding up. Because there's going to be one ball link at the bell crank. And that's it. We're going to have... I'm going back to the old way. And if I was smart, I'd use a stuffed aluminum tube as a push rod. Because it's lighter. There's... Uh, there's no difference between strength, but aluminum stuffed with balsa wood is half again, half again as uh, as light as the carbon. You know, you guys, they want to do. Carbon fiber, you know, they, they think that carbon, carbon, carbon. Well, that's all well and good. It sounds great, but it's really not. The carbon veil is no stronger than tissue. Matter of fact, it's weaker, and it takes more dope. And this, I got carbon, uh, 15,000th carbon. Oh, I about knocked that off the wall. This is 15,000th carbon sheet. And you can use this in places like spars, laminate spars or whatever, laminate different things together with it. Billy shows how to use this in making his uh, Aries on my channel. If you go back at how to build an I-beam wing on my channel, he shows you this carbon 15,000th carbon sheet. It's no good. You know. Why is it no good? Well. It, it takes a lot of glue. So that means more weight. And you're really not gaining anything. The balsa wood, if you use it right, engineer it right, is just as strong. Without all that other garbage in it. I, went, I got away from uh, plywood doublers and went to the laminated, this is on the lawn dart type fuselage. On this fuselage, there's, there's uh, no doublers in it at all. This type fuselage, is, the motor held in with 16th inch balsa wood. So the the crutch is made the crutch is made as we showed you with the um, you really can't see it here it's hollow the 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 maple is hollowed out an eighth of an inch and then cross grain balsa eighth inch is put in there and then it's filled so the crutch itself is real strong but what it's suspended with is engineering it's not suspended with sheer force it's suspended light ply light ply uh, formers and 16th inch wood is what's holding holding that out there and um, 
this crutch here will glue to the top of the wing to transfer all vibration from the fuselage. Yes, I had elect electric P47. Yeah, I had a one with a pipe too. Yep, there were two different airplanes. I built five of them. This is uh, number six. Kai Marcucci has the electric one. Anyway, um, the motor is just suspended with the uh, 16th inch balsa wood. And this is a PA-75. So you don't need all that heavy duty former crap. It, it's just, you know, doublers, 8th inch doublers and 16th inch doublers. Uh, I was, I'm doing the, the Randy Smith style doubler that you laminate an eighth inch inside, three thirty second fuselage side. These fuselage sides are three sixteenths. This was the lightest contest wood I could get my hands on. I had a couple of pieces left over from years ago in St. Louis, so I brought brought those back. And what'll make this lighter is once I get it shaped to the outside, it's be rounded to the outside. I'll sand the inside. I'll spend I'll spend hours sanding the inside to get this down to sixteenth of an inch thick instead of three sixteenths to get that weight off of there. But use your brain. Don't don't use glue. Use your brain. What what is it going to take to make it strong and light? And the only way, especially nowadays with the wood that we we are getting, to make it light, is to leave parts off. Like my like what I do with the cap strips and the trailing edge, three sixteenths instead of quarter inch on the caps. If you think about it, it's a sixteenth, a sixteenth, a sixteenth, a sixteenth. You know, how much wood are you leaving off by just taking a sixteenth off? Making this three quarter instead of one inch. How much are you leaving off? You're leaving, a, you know, a whole piece, one whole piece off. Try to get the lightest wood that you, you can. I don't, I don't normally hollow my ribs any more than what's done here with the you know, the uh, 5 eighths brass tube and then cut a slot out. If you, if you cut the, cut the material away from the rib and make it a quarter inch, you're not going to gain maybe a gram out of the whole wing, but you'll make the whole wing weak. So, and I use three, three thirty second uh, sheeting on all this stuff and sand if you use 16th you can't sand and you guys know i like to sand so <laughs> all right that's going to do it for this evening we'll see you tomorrow night i'll uh see if i can we'll do bell crank mounting and and i'll uh make up a compression the bigger compression spars and uh we'll mount the bell crank up maybe in an hour that you know if i can fit the bell crank we may fit a few uh fit a push rod as well and i'll show you how i'm going to zero that out this is a uh, this setup slightly different but uh we'll get that done so we get the push rod in and all that business all right guys appreciate you watching like, subscribe, and share, and all that other business. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Fair winds tight line. See ya.